I'd like to introduce Angel Luo, the uh, winner of our speech contest. Good evening. <laughs> Abort the thought, save the baby, was once said by Chinonai J. Chidolu. Abortion still exists in many other countries outside of the United States. Now you might be able to tell that I'm not from the United States. My home country, China, has a huge population and also have a, huge have a huge number of abortions each year under the one-child policy. China was overpopulated at the end of 20th century, so the government decided to limit the number of ch children each family could have. According to Burlington Free Press, they estimated 13 million abortions were performed, and approximately 10 million abortion pills were sold in 2008. In 2016, the policy changed to offer families in rural areas an opportunity to have a second child, only if their first child was female. And families living in cities are allowed to buy a second child permit. Today, gender discrimination still exists in rural areas. Attitudes change slowly. There's a Chinese expression which translates Raising a girl is like watering somebody else's yard. Female babies were often the ones who got aborted or sent to orphanages. Other countries call this genocide. This gender prejudice tilts the population balance of China. The male population is higher due to genocide. The growing number of abortion worldwide in 2018 on worldometers.info, published by the World Health Organization, was shocking. Starting from 12 p.m. on December 31st in 2017 to 9 a.m. on April 4th in 2018, there were already over 10,742,800 abortions recorded worldwide. This corresponds to approximately 125,000 abortions each day. What does this number mean to us? 125,000 deaths per day is the equivalent of the population of Carmel and Brownsburg, Indiana combined. Just think about it. In one day, the entire cities of Carmel and Brownsburg gone. This forces us to examine what our society has done to the unwanted. Now, aside from the effects abortions can create on populations, abortions are also found to be harmful to women's bodies. In our society today, abortion is harming women both psychologically and physically. An article published on Psychology Today in 2011 by Dr. James Coyne explains the negative mental health effects resulting from abortion. It claims that women who have had an abortion have 80% higher risk of subsequent mental health problems compared to women who have not had an abortion. They could also have higher rates of anxiety, depression, alcohol use, and other suicidal behaviors. Now let's talk about its physical health effects. Women who have had abortions have higher risk of having persistent bleeding, damaged internal organs, or other painful side effects. Evidence proves that abortion is extremely harmful to women, and there must be a way for us to protect the female gender and save another life. We as a society need to support women and their children. Please, think of the unborn and those unheard voices. I participate in the service organization, Best Buddies, which helps people with Down syndromes and intellectual disabilities. They cannot speak fluently, 
or live independently. During the time we have spent with our buddies, I learned that they have challenging lives and they need constant care from others. At first I thought, what a tragic life they have to go through since their parents did not abort them. However, my opinion changed immediately after the first day being with them. The beaming faces they show when playing bingo, the warm greetings they give every day, the big hugs they share after each dance always fill my heart. They may appear imperfect to you, but they're happy. The world is not a perfect place and we all have imperfections. Our buddies have a right to live, to experience the world, and to contribute to the society. If their lives were terminated, they would not have the chance to love or to be loved. Finally, I would like to remind you what is written in the Declaration of Independence of the United States. All citizens have the right to live. We have unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's clear that right to life is listed first because it's the most important. The first right is to life, and let us work towards that end for all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angel.